Oh, very cool. Very cool indeed. Hello. Hey, greetings, Gix. How's it going? How are you? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. I, like I said, I just completed uh, the Mage Guild quest line. I am actually recording. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, my the whole thing, because I, I just had that final... Oh, well, first of all, have you completed the Mage's Guild quest? I the whole completed quest line? pretty much everything with the exception oh, of the um, Alder, Aldermary Dominion. Sorry. Okay, Aldermary Dominion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so then it's not spoiling anything when I say... Oh, no, no, not at all. Okay. Uh, that's why I wanted to record it, and because uh, I my brother told me I was like near the end. I'm champion level 41 now, by the way. Um, nice. And um, I, I went with, uh, you know, the last. I went with keeping keeping her here, you know, and, and made her sane again, or rather, uh, Shogarath made her sane. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you do? Uh, it depends. I I played it twice because I have two oh, wow. characters, and I did both. But mm. my first option was, um, I don't remember, I think, she seemed really eager to stay, so I think I let her be, and I got a book instead. Like, oh, okay. who am so I to argue with the King of Madness, right? So. Okay, the, um, what, what did he call them, the, the, Fal the Falian books or something like that? Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, it's been, what, years now? Years now. Oh, okay, wow. This is my total first time. Um, nice. Know this. I'm still, yeah, I'm still fresh to it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slow at this. I, you know, just like with Skyrim, I talk to the NPCs. You know, I just, I love getting immersed in everything. And, and uh, I know it may sound goofy, but I really get into character. I sometimes start breaking into Old English. Art thou. Oh, wow, stuff okay. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is this your first um, um, <laughs> time playing through Elder Scrolls Online? Yeah, I have not even beaten the main quest. I just got to... Well, I don't want to say just got to it, but... Where is it? Uh, Cold Harbor and the Army of Meridia. So, let's see. Okay, yep. I ha the last thing I have to do, it says here, is rescue Vanis Galarian. And so I'm rebuilding uh, or making an army. Uh, King Lalor Larry and Dinar is imprisoned to the west beyond a moonless walk. Vanis Galarian is trapped somewhere to the east. We should also watch for any of the other missing Fighters Guild and Mages Guild members or anyone else who can help me. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know how far yeah. away I am from the end of the game, but... Um... Heh. Well, let's say you're near the end of the third... Uh, of a third, I should say, of the storyline, or a quote, third, quote storyline. Okay. Yeah, because um, the thing is, is that it'll. Eh, I don't want to spoil it, but it. Let's just say that you got a long ways to go before you can quote unquote complete the main quest. Okay, so well, that's that's good. Well, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's all these, you know, Al, uh, Alucard Desert, Aruden, Bankorai, and Isma. You know, so many places that I can go to, and now I got the Ursinium. Uh, yes. Pack, so I can go to Rathgarian uh, yes. Mountains. And yeah, then, th uh, those quest lines aren't related. Like the DLC, like the, it, it's related to the main story as far as like the setting. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, but it has no relation, as far as I can tell, with the main mm -hmm. quest of you saving the world kind of thing. Like, like, um, what is it? Dr like the Dragonborn DLC for Skyrim. I wouldn't you know. know. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know. Okay. Yeah, I haven't beaten it myself. But um, I just got to it in my previous game when I used to play it on the 360. Oh, okay. Um, but so I haven't been there yet. Like I said, I I've only beaten uh, well, I've beaten the main quest, of course, but I only beat uh, Dawn Guard from the Dawn Guard side, not the Vampire side. And I haven't done um, what is it, uh, the Dark Brotherhood at all, or Thieves Guild at all. And I I think I completed Companions, I got to the part oh, okay. where you can become a werewolf. But that was that's it, you know what I mean? And then there's still a plethora of side quests that I have not done. Neat. Yeah. But yeah, like the the it gets complicated when it comes to the main quest after you finish like the third or the first act of three. Let's put it that way. 
Um, mm. It gets complicated, but it, it allows you to visit all the other areas. And at one oh. point, um, because right now you're just doing that one faction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daggerfall Covenant. Yeah, you're Daggerfall Covenant, yeah. uh, which was my second uh, portion, my second third, I should say. Oh, okay. When I did it, because I'm Ebenhart Pack, so I started in um, Stone Falls. Okay, which, which I can get to there. I've I've been there before. Yeah, because now uh, one Tamriel kind of unlocks that uh, ability. Yeah. So you would think that because they did that, they would allow everyone to kind of co-op. Oh, oh, is this because you have that, that Tamriel power, that, what is it called, the um, Imperial DLC, right? Now oh, it's not it? because of that. It's because I'm literally in Cyrodiil right now in PvP. So oh, I'm thinking oh, it locks okay. me up, thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm even hard-packed. Because in Cyrodiil, okay. the factions are still active. Are different, gotcha. That's it's a, like an arena kind of place. Where every, the different factions can fight. Right, yes. Okay, I remember that. So if you was to get out of there, then then we can all like kind of mix, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. You're doing PvP right now. Uh, well, we just uh, took over a few. Uh, well, I say we, but my faction, because okay. we're awesome. We took a few keeps earlier today. Uh, oh wow. And um, now I'm actually in a delve within okay. Cyrodiil. Because oh, the, nice. okay. uh, the entire, uh, I don't know if you can zoom out of your map and look at Syria. Mm. Okay, but, hold on here. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm in Cyrodiil now, or, you know, in the map of Cyrodiil. Right. Uh, you probably don't see any many icons, but no, the... Six um, of them. Okay. The density of um, dolmens, delves... Uh, points of interests really are as well it's as dense as a regular zone where you're questing right now uh, oh, okay. it just doesn't have as many quests because typically you're supposed to kill people but it has a few quests like uh, if you go to any of the cities there are mm. quests there if you go beyond like the beaten path where all the keeps are you have dungeons and you have well i don't want to call them dungeons really but you have like pits where you can explore underground and you have delves yeah where you have like you know um oh, it's been a while what's the term for it sky shards and all that stuff you oh, yeah, have all of these are in cyrodiil as well so right now i'm in a delve and i'm trying yeah. to complete it by uh killing yeah. the um the, the the boss inside yeah the, the delves are the place where you get the scar shards. Well, there's there's also sky shards just outside. Up, yeah, outside, of course, yeah. But then, and, but each delve, and that's the one with the icon of a uh, of a torch. A, a torch. Those ones right. always have a, you know, like a sky shard in there, as well as the various ones all around. Sometimes in towns. Yes, correct. I, I think the only thing I haven't seen so far. Uh, when you compare Cyrodiil to all the other zones, are the mm. treasure maps. I don't ah, think I okay. found any treasure maps in Cyrodiil. Yeah, I've got some treasure maps, and I haven't even uh, like done anything with it. I mean, I looked at it once, and then, um, let me see, and I don't know Oh, they're pretty to fun to that. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, um, Let's see. If you 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 say like you, you spend your time like just getting immersed and all that stuff, you mm. should have a fairly easy time to figure out uh, where to go. Oh, here's one. Yeah. Because right. as you, uh, it's easier once you've explored the entire area, but once mm. you've figured that out, you, you can tell uh, based on just the the image. Yeah, and like I'm looking at one right now, Deshaun. Yeah. It looks like some kind of hut, and then it's it's pointing. Like an arrow is pointing to an X, like somewhere in the trees, which I take it is where the treasure is. Yes, and that screenshot oh, nice. is the only... Well, basically, that's what it is. Yeah, it, it, they, they took a screenshot, and then they painted over. They drew over it, and uh, that's... Right? So it's yeah. as accurate, um, with a few exceptions. It's as accurate as you see it there. Okay. Oh, I like that. There were some oh, instances where it's not exactly a perfect copy, and that threw mm. me off a bit. 
But mm. for the most part, I'd say, like, if you wanted me to give you a number, like, 90% of them are accurate. Okay. Yeah. It's Well, it's kind of like in, um, well, in Skyrim, you know, I know, I think you found treasure maps there before, too. You know how, it, you know, you'd find a map and then it, it would, it's kind of, like, similar. It would tell you, like, where there's going to be, like, a chest or something. I don't you found, remember. <laughs> you don't remember in Skyrim? Yeah, I don't remember There's in treasure Skyrim. maps, too. Okay, cool. Okay. That's awesome. Which I, I think is where they got it, this from. It's kind of similar. Um, oh, um, I don't know if you saw on my channel, but the hangout that we did, uh, <laughs> um, I, okay, well, I, I put it on private, mainly because, and we were on for like nearly three hours, um, but okay. it was awesome, we were talking about great stuff, but I had forgotten to switch the PC speaker to headphones, even though it was switched to headphones for, on the hangout, you know, but oh, the hangout so is now I hear all like, um. You hear me, but you don't hear you. Okay. Oh, that's sad. So, yeah, for three hours. So what I did was I just took, like, an excerpt of that, and I narrated slightly over it and explained, it, like, briefly some of the highlights we were talking about. And I apologized, on, you know, for this happening. And it happened before when I was with Dean of DVD. Um, okay. I don't has, has you, uh, have you, like, talked to him, I guess? Or he said that he subscribed to you and... I think he said he commented, but look for a comment by Dean of DVD. I, I sent him uh, okay. your way, and he said he was. Because I, I have stuff. okay, I, I I can't keep track of uh, I, well, that I know. kind yeah. of stuff anymore. But of course, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which is kind of sad name. because I can't even look it up by name. Oh, okay. Which is uh, like if you say, "Oh man," uh, some people ask me once, like. Um, what is the number like? Was I your fifth? Was I your fifth uh, subscriber and stuff like that? And I just I can't find you in the list. <laughs> yeah, how was I your fifth subscriber? Yeah, there's a way uh, to like, find that out. Really? Uh, maybe I don't know. I can't oh. tell. <laughs> yeah, I. I uh, mean, I, I don't have nearly that much. This is my gaming channel, which is Archmage Felagar. I only have like 52 subscribers, but, and then my main channel, which is like more movie related stuff. That one I have like. 530 something like 535 yeah i noticed you had more like um like a, a wide variety of subject matter when it comes to your videos oh is yes. that all on the same yeah. channel no no two i have two separate channels uh which okay. is the gaming channel the gaming channel of course has all the let's plays um and then a the movie channel has like the updates there's you'll be surprised there's a, there's actually a movie community uh, where people just show updates show collection overviews i have about Probably two thousand Blu-rays, and not including DVDs. So maybe oh, total, wow. yeah. I <laughs> and not including my box sets that I have of you know things like the Wizard of Oz, you know, collect collector's edition box set, my Lawrence of Arabia and stuff like that. Um, Was that the so, channel yeah. that you first uh, hosted uh, when we? Um... For the first time, yeah. Yeah, for the first time. Oh God, I'm being killed right now. Oh. <laughs> I guess two Covenant people had the same idea of coming into the delve. Mm. I just got destroyed. Oh, that's, right. that's right. Because you, I remember you told me that when you're in that area, in that PvP area, no matter what dungeon you're in, like the delve, they can just come down there and attack you. If oh, for you're sure. Yeah. Different coven. <laughs> yep. Oh, that, that makes it kind of interesting, though. Well, that's the, the, uh. the open PvP aspect of... Uh, mm. uh, which I love. Uh, like it, it, I guess it's it, it's not necessarily the perfect way, but I think it's a good balance between those who just want the MMO to be like uh, open PvP, mm -hmm. and and those who don't want that because in their minds it, it kind of ruins the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you're yeah. trying to be get immersed in the world, and suddenly you get stabbed. That's not yes. necessarily fun for them. Uh, no, I, I, I but you. For some people, uh, specifically like uh, on my spectrum, who has been dealing this since the early 90s when it, multiplayer yeah. came out, um, yeah. like we talked earlier, like last time about Diablo 1 and all that stuff, yeah. I'm used to getting stabbed in the back and I kind of like it. You kind of, yeah. I, you, you know, when I first played Diablo, because um, for the first time, you know, uh, the Battle.net thing, because before I used to play with my brother with a serial link if you remember how you know back in the old days where we actually connect 
one computer to the next, okay, or to, to another computer. Yeah, and it's just I, two, okay, I know serial. what it is, but I never used one because that's a PC thing. Uh, yeah, right, okay. But that's basically what it is. You're just connecting two computers together, and we would play Diablo, the first one, and we're just used to just, you know, just two-player thing. Uh, so when we were able to get, you know, be able to, you know, when we got the internet um, for the first time and able to play uh, multiplayer, I, I didn't get the whole like PVB thing, so I go down to this dungeon and I'm a sorcerer as I normally play, and this warrior who seemed like he was helping me out as soon as we got down there, and then it looked like he was swinging for me, right? So I'd stand and he hits me. I'm like, whoa, and I, you know, I type in, well, you almost, you, you know, that kind of hurt, <laughs> and I moved, and he he was like following me, and then he starts taking swings like wherever I would step and I'd move. Oh, that's funny. He's trying to swing at me, and then, and I said, hey, what's going on? And he just like he didn't say nothing. And he just left the game. So I said, okay, so that's my first experience with that kind of thing. Um, what, what did, did he kill you at all? He, he did not kill me, though. He did oh, not okay, kill that's, that's odd. Because I was able to, like, elude him, you know, by, by moving around. Because I noticed he's clicking on me to, to to swing at me, and I would move and kind of elude him in time. So, and, or he wasn't, like, doing enough damage, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, in a way, like, th some people like to earn items that way. Ah. Right, because yeah. if you were running around, I mean, some people just like to, you know, grief and kill people just for the sake of for killing people. Of yeah, um, but in a way, it was a legitimate way to get. Well, legitimate. Uh, it, it was a way to get items because you knew that yeah. the other guy we have items. Yeah. Yes. It's. Um, I guess, you know, if we put it in movie terms, like uh, in a post-apocalyptic world, it's one of those. Uh, like strongest of or, or survival of the fittest or yes that that type of thing you know what i mean it's it's like winner take all kind of thing you yeah. you kill to to you know to stay on top and get the best gear you take it from other people and it just adds that that edge of you know realism uh, yep. to the game yeah and in um in those days like mm. with all the hacks and stuff like that, you had to be yes. free of even like level one characters. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, level one characters were almost synonymous with mm. uh, player killers. Yes. So whenever yes. you would have like you would play and you'd say you're level twenty or whatever, and the level one joins, you know that he's after you. Yes. Uh, because... so... And then there was uh, the duping, whole, the whole duping thing, if you remember that. Oh, yeah. I, I still remember how to do it, too. So and it's, Yeah, yeah. Something about dropping an item, and then you, you pick it up and drop it quick. And I think it had something to do with potions, was it? I well, think. it was, was it the easiest way little... to do it because you, you, needed, you needed to use your belt. Yeah, your potion. Okay. So the, the idea was there was a bug where uh, if you tried to pick up an item mm -hmm. while you had the cursor uh, as another item because when you it, click to grab your yeah. cursor becomes that item yeah therefore if you picked up an item it, while it, 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 your cursor was something else yeah then um well the item on the ground couldn't be picked up mm -hmm. but the bug was that the item was now copied over what you grabbed and it goes into your inventory and then the thing that you couldn't pick up is on the ground right well, so it doesn't have... <laughs> automatically go in your inventory. It's just that you have it now in your cursor. So you, all you have to do is deposit it back in, onto your inventory. Yeah, yeah. So the I... trick is you you walk because your character walks slowly, right? So you drop yeah. the item on the ground. You step yeah. a few, uh, you take a few steps back. Then yeah. you command your character to walk, and while he's walking, you're prepared. You get prepared to. Um, like grab an item from your inventory mm. and that yeah. would loop it yeah i mean people would do it all the time not just not just with the armor of course you know the rings the amulets and stuff like that and uh what was that i had this armor a uh, demon i think it's called demon spike do you, do you remember that one the, the unique i don't uh, remember much of the names of the unique i just remember um wind force wind force yeah, you, you know what uh, there was a barbarian, not a barbarian warrior. He was using wind force. Now, typically, you would always see, you know, rogues uh, using bows. Yeah. But sometimes they have the, those kind of, um, I don't know what you call them, but not alt characters, but I think like they're hybrids. called uh, hybrids. Right, right. Yeah. You're, you're using something you're not supposed to use really, so it made it kind of cool. So when I saw this warrior for the first time, 
with a bow, and I'm like, cool, you know, I've never seen that before. I'm going, I'm like, what bow is that? He just simply types in Wind Force. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's cool. And then he brought it back for Diablo 2, and I just thought that was just outstanding. And I, I love that bow. And Diablo um, 3. And, and Diablo 3. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my Demon that. Hunter has... Really? I don't know how many copies of that bow. Not because I duped it, but because it just keeps... You found it. Thing. It's like the... It's like... Um, Baby's first uh, all, um, legendary bow. Yeah, for yep, first legendary three. bow. So, <laughs> uh, the cool thing about Wind Force is that it adds a knockback. Yes, that that's why it's called Wind Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, the graphic, like the spell effect in Diablo 3 is like a a, uh, a white swirl mm, from the yeah. grip. So it's actually kind of cool. But in Diablo 1, I just remember the name because... Well, first of all, it repeats in Diablo 2 again and in Diablo 3, but it mm. was just that one item that I just kept looting for some reason. Like, it, nothing else would drop. Just wind I just kept getting, like, a wind force, so uh, even as a sorcerer or warrior. And I was also one of those guys who were making hybrid characters because that's all I would get is the freaking wind force. Mm. Uh, I, so you would play, like, a mage or a uh, warrior using wind force? Yeah. Yeah, that is great. Or sometimes I would also play like a warrior with spells. Yeah. That's the only thing I would find, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, or vice versa. So, I mean, you, there are limitations. I would mostly but, always... It, you know, it, it works out pretty well. And that's yeah. one of the things I like about Diablo 1 specifically is the, the flexibility that you can, you know, deal with what you've got and it still be relatively capable of finishing the game. Yeah, 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 you know, I, I heard this from, um, and and it, you know, it kind of works for this too, is um, I, I think uh, the developers of uh, Pillars of Eternity uh, brought this up when, you know, how you can have a party of anything. You can have like all a party of mages or just a party of um, like chanters, right? Right. So it's kind of like when you do something like that, and then the same holds true with Diablo, it creates challenges for you when you play you know those hybrid kind of characters outside of your class like like you said a warrior with spells but there there would be your challenges you know what i mean and, and it doesn't make it impossible to beat it just right. offers up challenges for you to right have to you know have to overcome but it's still beatable and playable and doable i wouldn't necessarily play pillars of eternity with like all chanters and stuff like that because i still don't no. know how they work but oh, uh really? yeah it's... i had a, like a one guy in my group and i just Shoved him in the uh, the castle because I just couldn't understand how to. Use oh, it. Yeah, I I got the hang of it. Um, but yeah, maybe that that can be a discussion for another time. Maybe like a <laughs> hangout. But I, I got the hang of it, and I, I know how to. Uh, you that's know, cool. If if you're gonna get back to uh, pillars. Oh, oh and by the way, there's a new uh, game. I guess you can kind of see it as the second pillars, but it's really its own yeah, game. Yeah, right? T yeah, <laughs> you know <laughs> it. I gotta I, get I, it. I thought about it. Hmm. Because it's it's one of those alternate universe where the bad guy wins. Yes. Always, uh, even in movies, I'm like, why can't the I just want to see a movie where the bad guy wins just once. Well, like in Star Wars or something like. Just let in, me see the bad guy win. In 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 a way, in Revenge of the Sith, the bad guys did kind of win. Yeah, but kind it was of, just but, opening up for yeah Star Wars and Jedi and all that Empire. So it's I, like, I yeah, did they really win? But I guess you're right in it technically, but I, I wanted it. They won for that movie. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, it's you kind of spoil it for yourself because you watch that movie, which is a prequel, mm, and you yeah. know that they're going to lose already, even though they technically won. So to me, it doesn't count. Um, okay. But the the um, yeah, in tyranny, it, it looks really interesting. I'm just afraid that because I got overwhelmed with the different mechanics in pillars okay and i'm kind of afraid and that's not the only reason but i'm kind of afraid that they would pull that off again where like they would just change the names of the stats oh. or the goals just for the sake of mm. it and i'm like you don't need to do that just to yeah stick with um uh what is it uh strength endurance intelligence right like you don't you know, need to call it like a, a a phoenix a feather for uh, you know to resurrect or uh like magic or potion you know it's close to mana or magic so it makes you know you can get away with it 
Yeah. Uh, but even back then, like Elder Scrolls, I, I thought it was kind of weird that they called it magic. Uh, you know, it's, but it, it, it's a term, and it, it's it's not too alien. Yeah, and uh, what I also found kind of weird with the Elder Scrolls, and I was it uh, Morrowind or was it was it Daggerfall, but they called um, the carry capacity encumbrance. <laughs> now encumbrance is like you know when you're encumbered, that means you know you're you're over capacity, you know carry capacity. Right. So I just kind of found it funny they actually called it, and I think they labeled it as such. It may not have been an Elder Scrolls game, but I, I remember there was a game, but I'm almost sure it oh, is, God, one of the God, Elder God. Scrolls, right. where they called the carry capacity encumbrance. So it was kind of confusing. Oh, I'm, I'm okay with that, because it, it's mm. sort of... Yeah, um, I, I was okay with it too, but I mean, the, I guess in the review I read, they found it kind of confusing. But I just... Because I've... Yeah. Like, a term like might and strength... Mm. In a way, I'm okay with it. It's just weird that okay, why did they change it? But um, when it becomes like, I would have to to uh, get the stats back up because there were a few terms in uh, in pillars that I just couldn't figure out what they really meant without mouse overing them all the time. Yeah, I, um, I noticed that. And because the lore is so rich, like all the books, there's even when you highlight over certain words, it opens up another window with like another, you know what I'm talking oh, yeah, about? Oh, like yeah, like a tooltip within it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah like, within well, the I'm thing. I'm okay with that because it <laughs> like, because are you really going to remember every single detail that, every time you open a book? Like, no, that is I true. can't do that. It, yeah, I, I, I do like that. It, it is cool, but at the same time, it's also, for me, also got kind of overwhelming because oh, yeah. there was just so much. But I mean, to me, that's kind of expected from for an RPG. If your RPG can't do that, yeah. Uh, um, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's weak, but right. it, it, it's kind of like, are you really surprised, right, to yeah, have that yeah. in? So, I'd rather it have too much information like that, if there's a such thing for like an RPG, than not have enough, where it's like super rudimentary, and I can't think of a game like, okay, let's take Fable, for example. Have you played any of the Fable games, like Fable? Not Fable at all. 2? Okay, that's very, very, that's like an RPG light, literally. I mean... There's like lore, but it doesn't really explain so much, and it's the the way it plays out, and um, it plays more like an action RPG, I guess. But um, it it's it's literally like an RPG light. It doesn't have a lot of uh, like information about anything. Not you know, not a lot to read. It's kind of like um, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and well, not have it. You know what I mean? Because it's harder the other oh, way. Oh yeah, I can I can see thing. that. Yeah. So I'm glad the information is there, you know, so you can kind of look it up at your own leisure. Like, oh, let's take, take for example, right now, I beat the Mage's Guild. He gave me something called, because I sided with um, Velast. Right. Ed, how do you pronounce it? Idetic Ed, oh, Ed, Ed, Memory. So what it is, is it opened up all of the oh, books yeah. that I have read. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, I can just yep, read yep, it yep, on yep. my own leisure. Like, and not just books, but letters. Like, here, a letter from Alton. And Guarmo's uh, orders, well, Masu, you know, anything, supply orders. Like, everything is opened up, and it's, like, right there that I can just kind of read it, cross-reference with other things, and I absolutely love that. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Like, when I'm waiting for a raid, uh, back when I was raiding in Elder Scrolls Online, like, that's the perfect mm. thing to do is to just chill and read a book. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is something I do. It's one of the reasons why I keep worms as well. Because you know, why not go fishing while, while you're waiting for your buddies yes. to uh, come to your location? Yes. Unfortunately, you need a specific spot for fishing. Yeah. But uh, you know, it works out. I've got yeah. I've, let me see here. I've got uh, yeah. I've got 39 crawlers, uh, 21 worms. <laughs> so yeah, I've I fish, but also they they're used for ingredients as well because I'm a provisioner. Yeah, I'm trying to get that in because the when you start to meta game for PvP mm. or anything really, when it comes to end game, you're more or less expected to eat provisions, like to eat food, yes. just to get that health up. Yes. Uh, which reminds me that oh no, I'm still buffed. I, I need to eat again fairly soon. I'm <clears> killing <throat> a bunch of blueberries right now. Ah. Uh, so Say, Gix, if if you do not mind, uh, you're you're on the uh, Ebonheart 
uh, yes. Ebonheart Pack, but that's yes. not necessarily like a, a guild or anything. And I, you know, we talked about this in, in the Hangout. And you remember I told you our guild leader is Gary, Gary right. from Bulgaria, and we have a, a guild name. And it's it's her idea. We came up with the the name Warriors of Xena. Um, would you be cool with joining up? And and I mean, two reasons why. Of course, you know, it'd be awesome to have you in, on the team. But if you have ten members, and right now we have, hold on here, we're like short by like like two. Okay. <laughs> like two or three. What happens is we can open up the guild bank when you have ten members to the to the guild. You know what I mean? And that would. Yep. Are, are you gonna? Are you cool with that? Or yeah, I'm cool with that. I mean, one of the cool okay. things about Elder Scrolls cool, Online cool. Am among um, a few like guild wars mm. is the ability to join multiple guilds at the same time. Oh, I like that. Okay. Uh, I think you can up, have up to five, and all you have to do is like slash represent. Or some such, and then you can have access to the guild's uh, bank and stuff like that, the, the utilities for that guild, or the chat, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I'm okay with it. Um, cool. I used to be part of like a huge guild, but it got like really hectic. You know, the, the kind of guild where you have to log in oh, once a week every so often. Yeah, I was yeah, a yeah. part of that. I or like you that. have to be part of a forums and. Uh, uh, write a post every two days minimum or something like that and that got like that became work so, yeah so I, long as you're okay with me just no, not yeah. dealing with that crap then yeah no, no. I, I'll... like I said and I'm, if I could just remember how to um, I, I know what you mean exactly because uh, in Lord of the Rings Online I was part of this guild and this person John um, I didn't log on for like a couple days and when I logged on, he was pissed at me. Matter of fact, he I wish like his uh, I forgot what the rankings were you know in, in, in that game, but uh, he was the, the guild leader and I was the second in command. He he bumped me down. <laughs> okay. and, and he said, like, where were you? You know, we were worried about you. I was like, Hey, chill, man. I, so I you know, I just um eventually just slowly faded away, just not coming on as much and just kind of zoned myself out. Um, so yeah, we're we're nothing like that. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm just trying to figure. And, and to give you an example, uh, Gary G doesn't come on a whole lot on here, and she's our guild leader, so that should tell you something. Okay. You know, we, you know, it's just like a group of friends who like to get together and play. Yeah, that's cool. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. I mean, okay. the sad part is that those guilds are ri um, picky. Because mm. they're doing it for the good of the guild. Like, they're doing it for, uh, like, one of the reasons why you had to post, like, at least once or every two days was because it added a sense of activity to the game. Uh huh. Okay. The guild, so it, it motivated people, but at the same time, it also um, makes it where it becomes work and some people aren't motivated to do that. Because yes. it's uh, mandatory. Yeah, I. So it, it's on, kind it's of a like game. a double-edged <laughs> sword. Well, it's also a game. Yeah, but I mean, the problem I have is like, let the game be within the game. Mm. Right. Okay. Because when yeah. you when you have to put like the, because I got kicked out of that guild, uh, and you know the, the the guild leader was nice enough to tell me like all you have to do is reapply in in three two months or whatever. I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Thanks for, or, but like, if you want me to reapply, why are you kicking me reapply. out in the first place? Right. But right. they, the um, oh crap, I, I kind of forgot what I was talking about. But it's the idea that you, um, I got kicked out because I didn't, I, I was like a week late with my forum post. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I'm, like I'm playing the game. Like, why? Why are you? Yeah. You know. What is a forum post? What What do you have to post? Like, how your day was in the game, or what is that about? Oh no, you just have to reply. Like, oh, that's nice. Or you, you, you bring a new topic, whatever, you, anything. Okay. You just needed activity hmm. within the forums to. Okay. Be, um. Oh, there you go. Zena. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have. See, I mean, as you can see, these are. The members and honestly 
Um, Actually, you're too zone... busy shooting at your allies to uh, <laughs> oh, okay. to look at the guild right now. That's why I got. Oh, okay. I'm a little delayed on the uh, access because I just died. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus! You are, you are rank 163. Where's my brother at? Okay, see, you and my brother are like the same, like in ranking almost. He's you're 163. He's 178. And my my cousin. Nat, he's like 191. But then see here, I'll give you an example. Okay. okay. I told you Gary is our guild leader. She's yeah. level 19. Not not champion level 19, but just yeah, level just 19. Leveled. <laughs> That's our guild leader, okay? Well, yeah. <laughs> but when so did they start playing? Because... Oh, well, we started at the same time. Uh, Gary, Gary and me did in any case. Right. Because that's the difference. Because I'm only a 160 champion, but I started mm. since day one. Okay, I see. Right. Of course, I I had some off time. Yeah. Uh, my brother started before me, and and Nat, my cousin, he started like pretty much day one as well. So that's why he's 191. Because 160 is unofficially the bare minimum for which you can wow. consider yourself to be competitive. Really? Okay. Yeah. Beyond oh, wow. that, like if you're lower than that, you're cannon fodder. And even <sighs> at 160, you die fairly quickly. Wow. Well, well, it's kind of different now though because of um, the whole one Tamriel thing, how everyone or other enemies scale. There's, well, there's scaling in the sense that if you're uh, low level, like let's say level 10, for example, right? You can still okay. go to Cyrodiil at level 10, and that'll move okay. up to level 50. But your okay, like gotcha. champion points are independent from that. So yeah, you're level 50-ish, even though another level, like a true level 50, could probably still kick your ass. Uh, I gotcha. um, but it's primarily because of the items. I gotcha. Because okay. 160 allows you, because right now the cap of um, champion points is 512. Oh Jesus! Okay. <laughs> but the highest, the highest item level, goes to champion point uh, 160. Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. The reason why it's more or less considered like the bare minimum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, and right now, just to be able to kill stuff without dying instantly. I'm actually playing on a server uh, where the champion points don't matter. Oh, really? Like so all, all you're talking champion... about the points you put yeah, into Yeah, yeah, the... yeah, they, they just don't count at all. Really? Okay. Uh, the the items still count. So if you're like, say, level, like, I don't know, level 50, and you're wearing level 90 um, champion points uh, items, it that won't matter because I have 160 uh, point uh, worth of items essentially that's the mm. where they say it but my item level is bigger than your item, le item level essentially yeah which is yeah, I mean I, I just paid 500 gold just near the beginning of this whole recording of the session today um, it was a three set piece like a vampire lord set uh, okay. For 500, and they're all champion level uh, 160. It was like a boot, amulet, and I think, I think an armor. Right. And I, I I stored it in my vault because uh, obviously I can't use it yet. Yep. I'm I'm like uh, 120 away. I'm champion one or champion 41. So. Yeah, and then you'll you'll be able to wear it if you don't find anything better, and then uh, you'll be able to start, uh, you know, killing people with it. Yeah. It's it's a good vampire set and it goes well with me being a vampire. So I, I figured for five hundred gold pieces. Oh yeah. That's not bad. And let me see my gold right now. Okay, went back up a little bit. Now I'm at fifteen k again. Um, because my brother needed two k. He seems to have problems with gold accumulating it. Oh, uh, well, um, story of my life. You have more than I do, actually. Oh wow. And well, the thing is, we're trying to pull our resources together, like uh, gold wise, so we can buy that. Guild, um, yeah, the guild, the home, guild, guild stuff. Home when yep. that comes comes out because the guild hall. I don't know when it's going to come out, but I think sometime soon because they're Have advertising. Have they really announced that? Because uh, yes. this is the first time I'm hearing about it. 
Oh no, yeah, they've they've um, maybe what I can do like uh, a little bit later is I'll share a video with you of the it's called uh, uh, housing in Tamriel, and the guy took a tour of the different houses that will become available. Um, okay. But the the thing is we don't know prices yet. But what I think it was uh, who was it? My brother told me well to put it in perspective, horses cost about forty two k just for a horse, so the houses are going to be really expensive. <laughs> Yep. So, oh. I remember my first horse though cost only one gold. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, you got that pack thing right because I I got some kind of um, I I forgot what it was, but it was a um, a different edition of it where it came with a horse. Um, yeah, it's either I, imperial set. Or yeah, imperial it's pack. either the collector's edition or That's the, the um, pre-order. I don't. I forgot which one gave me the ability to have like the imperials and that yeah. unlocked the horse as well yeah which and, um, a couple of months later i just replaced that horse like it's still in the stables but yeah I have a black one right now which is uh, awesome regular black or the one with uh, fire coming out of it oh just a regular black just regular. i'm okay. not that flashy when it comes to uh oh. horses. i had to get my zombie horse I, I got the camel because i got the um the thieves guild um uh, bundle thing that came with uh, a camel and uh a spit dragon fire pet. Oh, I didn't even uh, see that. I probably have it too. Oh, if you got yeah, then you yeah you probably have it then in your uh, when you push you for collectibles. Yeah. And then um, for Halloween, there was all these Halloween things on sale, and um, one of it was a uh, a zombie horse. And with these limited things, once they're gone, they're gone. Like next Halloween, they'll bring something else up. But then when it comes, I think when it comes to that specific thing. Because there, there are things in here that my brother or my cousin has that I've not seen come back. Yeah, I, I'm kind of disappointed that I missed the Halloween event because that costume yeah. looks awesome. I do have the one-year anniversary uh, tiger mount. Oh, oh, nice. They gave it for free and um, they like spell it to you. And it was kind of funny because I was running around with it for a while because a cat riding a cat was... Uh, yeah, that is great. I like that. A cat it's, riding a cat. It fits the lore <laughs> and it's funny to look at, so. Yes. Oh man, um, pincer attack those uh, blueberries. Are you paying are you paying um like a monthly fee for this? Or are you a um I used uh, to I forgot what you call like a, a paying member, I don't know what you call that, but subscription member? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. ESO plus as they call it. ESO plus okay. I used to, uh and then I stopped because okay. I was slowly like um how should I put this? Like, not lose interest, but I I was getting busy with other uh, other things and other games. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. But I am most likely gonna resubscribe again. Okay, I sh I should do that too. And I'm I don't know if I want to just go for the the month by month, which is fourteen ninety nine, or they have a thing I forgot like one hundred eighty days for a certain amount, like seventy something, but it broke down to like twelve ninety nine a month. So the yeah, longer, yeah, the, the more months you you commit the cheaper it's going to be cheaper yeah what is cool is you get 1500 crowns deposited you know for every month you yep. know at the time of pay so basically i guess when you pay the, it, the it thing like the yeah it pays itself instead of you going out to buy the crowns yeah you get the stuff and you have all dlc open to you well, well that's one of the reasons why i'm okay with the subscription because mm. beyond that like it also helps First of all, it helps the developers create the content because when yes. you have a, 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 um, a subscription player base, yeah, it allows you to budget your project. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to if people would just buy in like, um, oh, just that one pack or, mm. um, you know, that one DLC, you can't really gauge that gauge that so you you, you kind of hope that people will like it and people will buy it mm. and then it kind of like you you know pray to the stars essentially so when you have yeah. a budget it's a lot easier to plan your team and set up like a campaign so your content is better and all that stuff yeah and um, and it's, it's easily just, to gauge based on how many subscribers you have yeah, so of course they're going to reward the players who do subscribe because of that. Mm. 
Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm okay with it on both ends, as a consumer and as a like a, a fellow dev, quote unquote. Yeah. Because uh, it does make sense, and they did it in a really smart way because the crowns that you gain with your subscription pretty much pays off it does. your DLC, so you can because... pay it per- permanently afterwards. Yes, the, yeah. Because here's the thing: it's you get the fifteen hundred crowns. Well, guess what? Fifteen hundred crowns costs fourteen ninety nine, which is one month. One month, which is the cost of you know per month. If you don't go for the, you know the the, the bigger, right? The, the which longest would be cheaper yeah. for you in the long the run, which yeah. is better for them in the long run because they have a bigger pool for a longer period. Yes. yes. So it's like everybody wins. Yeah. That's, I think that's the thing I might want to save up for and then just do that one payment for the 74 I think it's 74 right. for the 180 days and and speaking of which how you're talking about you know the support and and you know buying not buying out but buying into it you know to, to support them is kind of like with uh, the Obs- uh, obsidian entertainment uh, with pillars that was done through the s- Kickstarter you know they didn't have enough money after a certain point so they raised I think they were asking for like 1.2 million but ended up getting 3.9 right like nearly quadruple the amount that they were asking for well apparently now i guess they're doing so well that well for a tyranny they didn't have to have any kind of kickstarter they were just able to do it through what they made from the previous exactly because so not like only a, did they get the kickstarter but mm. after the kickstarter there were more sales because it's yes. steam and people just keep buying it so yes with that money then you can say um and they probably got buyers as well, right? Because the thing with the industry is that, like publishers and stuff like that, if yeah. you can't convince them that people are going to buy it, they won't buy into it either. Yeah. So yeah. you can't fund your your game if there's no, like for example, uh, Diablo. Uh, just because I love Diablo so much, I can't stop of talking course. about it. The yeah, um, no. Blizzard North had problems funding the game. Because everybody thought in that era that RPGs were dead. Mm. So how do you fund an RPG if everybody thinks it's dead? So it's only because of Blizzard that they like, hey, that's a cool game, and they they bought Blizzard North essentially with a different name, but um, and that's how we, we got Diablo today, and it's, it was one of the most grossing games of all time. For the, especially like in 1996. Yes. Uh, so it's the same thing with Pillars, where are people really going to play or buy into like old school Baldur's Gate style RPGs? Because that's kind of passe, right? Especially when yeah. you have like the Mass Effects and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, or a Dragon or a Dragon Age. So Dragon it's Age. like, yeah. are they really going to spend the money to buy a top-down, simple? Um, I say simple in terms of the visually, in terms yeah. of presentation, uh, RPG, and the answer for them would be, well, no, I'm not going to buy into that. So the Kickstarter helps. Yeah, because it lets them see that people will buy into it. It will buy into it, and then you got a success. So yeah, now I have confidence in the developer and in their project. So that's two for two. So of course they they probably also had a funding from a publisher for t- uh, Tyranny. Right, yeah, uh, um, yep. Now, it's also a double-edged sword, because if you fail your Kickstarter, yeah. it means that you proved your point, or their point, that nobody's going to buy no it. Yeah. I see, and I, I, yeah, I see what you mean. It is kind of like a risk when you try something like that. Kickstarter. Yep. And, well, hey, I'm glad that it did work out, because then oh, yeah, know, Pillars of Eternity game. is absolutely fantastic. I love that game, and I, I personally go for... You know those old kind of old school top down kind of games like um well well uh let's take even though it's not top down let's take uh might magic series or, or ultima that's kind of like a top down the ultima series right ultima 3 ultima 4 quest of the avatar and then the might magic series i started with three isles of terra and then four clouds of zine and then dark side and, and you know about the might magic series and you put those two together and then you got the world of zine i only know the heroes of might and magic Oh, here, I love those too, yeah, the Heroes games too. So, I mean, 
Because I was a wizardry guy back in the day. The oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Wizardry. I played the one with, if you remember, Vi Domine. Oh, dude, that's Shoot. too long ago. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's too long ago for me. Okay. Like, I played it, but it wasn't, like, Something the game the... that I would devo devour. So I just, I, I know of it, and I played a bit of it. I remember okay. it, I enjoyed it, but I, I, like, it's not something that I would remember that well. Heavy bags. Okay, down. because, yeah, if I, if I remember correctly, um, you had something about, like, with the ship crashing, but the way the combat was, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, um, a little bit of pillars in the sense that when they move, when it's, like, their turn, it kind of goes into, like, a real-time thing almost, and then when it, it, you know, and they do their attack and everything, and then when it, it, goes into the the actual the, the, the combat thing again when it goes back to your turn Shit. everything yep. pauses you know just like how in pillars oh is. yeah oh that yeah so i remember that and i remember that the fights took long in um in wizardry that, that wizardry one that i played i there's, there's a couple of wizards you know i pay i played i think it was six bane of the cosmic forge and then seven crusaders of the dark savant or maybe it was it vice versa but and then the other one which was i think it was wizardry gold Eight, yeah, I think eight. I think I had gold. Gold, okay. I say so that because it's on a CD somewhere. I don't remember. Yeah, I played all those, and yeah, here, well, here we go. I, I'm let me grab this right now. I have my uh, the Ultimate RPG archives, and even though I have, so it's like I have these twice now. But I have it's kind of nice to have it in one collection. Um, what was it called? Uh, yeah, here, Wizardry Gold. Okay. Yeah. Like this... All right, I'm safe. Oh, the Ultima series. I love the Ultima series as well. Like Ultima Underworld one and two. Oh Steve yeah. And Abyss and Labyrinth of Worlds. I didn't get too much into those because those were PC exclusives. Hmm. And okay. back in the time, and back in those days, yes, I had a PC and I could play some PC games, but for the most part, I would play on, on the Mac. So. Um, I missed oh, out okay. on a lot of, specifically Let's Ultima uh, stuff, and um, yeah, and you, you mentioned like top down, and, and and the reason why I like the the old school top down games is mainly because of simplicity. I usually hmm. have a lot of conversation with friends and stuff like that about Zelda. Okay. There are typically two camps of Zelda uh, fans. Okay. See, the retro, you know. Uh, Super Nintendo, uh, original, top-down, uh, or Link Between Worlds on the 3DS kind of Zelda fan, like I am. Mm. And then you have the Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Wind I love that one, and, Ocarina and, of Time. You know, the 3D Zelda game. So it's always like a 2D versus a 3D game, um, or conflict, or argument. And my end was always the argument that 2D was just a better game because it was simple to, for the user to play it. You didn't have to bother with the camera controls or whatnot. And to yeah. me, that was a, uh, a main point. It's one of the reasons why I love Diablo so much, actually. It's just because you just click the thing. yourself. It's a, so, yeah, fixed, um, yeah. You know, it's a game, fixed camera. Yeah. I mean, the reason why I like Elder Scrolls, because it's all 3D and all that stuff, is because mm. it puts me in the perspective of the character. But for the most yeah. part, in terms of controls, it's very simple. Yeah. Uh, once you go, like, in Dark Souls territory, where you have, like, a camera that's close, but it's not first person, it's kind of pulled back, then yeah, it becomes yeah. complicated for me to play. Same here. Uh, um, just like that's my problem with uh, Witcher 3. And there is this mod where you can, it puts the game into first person, but really? there's problems with that because, yeah, um, yeah, and the combat is kind of weird when, when you play it. Um, not, not from my experience, but from what I've read, and I, you can look it up on YouTube. Um, and a friend of mine, Movie Mike, he's the one that turned me on to that because he knows how I love my first person perspective games. So I said, you know, you can play Witcher 3. Like this, but then there's also problems even just getting it to work because it is a mod and it's like you know not sanctioned by the, uh, the CD CD Project Red. Right. Um, and I remember I don't know if you know of a a, a, a let's player called uh, or named uh, Nagidal. 
He's also a really, really good one. Who I, you know, yeah, I remember his, his him. Plays are fantastic. He asked me permission for some reason. I was kind of weird for the picture in picture a long time ago. And I'm like, dude, go for it. Ask for permission? What do you mean? Well, because I was the, like a lot of people would say like I'm the grandfather of the Let's Play with the face cam or whatever. Oh, which it's really? a title that I never really claimed. Yeah. Uh, I just thought it was like a regular thing. I, I mean, I saw you. I mean, I think you were one of the first people I seen do it. I mean, I clicked on one girl right. and she did it, and, and you know, but she she wasn't really. Um, her style of playing the RPG was more like it seemed like she was just doing it, not really, like she didn't have a passion for it. She was right. just doing it because it's. I hate to say it, but you know, a girl playing the game. But and then I clicked on you and I go, oh, this is great. You you know, you kind of play like me. Where you kind of get into it, I, I probably kind of take it a step further <laughs> by doing the art thou and stuff like that. It, right, it gets... right, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I just always seen it as just like a natural thing to do with a picture cam, and yeah. I, I like. I mean, I wasn't yeah. doing anything special, but it's just that uh, Natigal back then, at the very least, uh, I guess mm. he felt that way. He felt like I was, mm. he was like copying a thing from me. So mm. yeah, I mean, I remember him because. Um, he, I, I remember that, that's when like I was, I, maybe I had a thousand subscribers, like I was small back then mm. and, um, he would go like, oh yeah, can, can I, can I do this? I like your style. And I'm like, yeah, go for it. That's, it's, mm. it's one of the first memories I have of that dude. Uh, okay. but he's, I remember he's a like, cool he, guy. he, he does play like Oblivion a lot and I watched his videos <clears> when <throat> it first came, um, came out and yeah, like his style is in a way, like he described, very similar to mine, like just just talking, very easy yeah. going, and uh... yeah, and I, I think that's how, you know, again, I, I hate to use the term again, but I'm, I'm proud to be it, uh, is how nerds basically are, you know, when, when nerds play it, um, especially, you know, those who have the Dungeons and Dragons background, who's played that, I, even in Dungeons and Dragons, pen and paper and the dice, I was really like the only one that would really super get into it you know besides the dm but the players around me um i was kind of like like the oddity of the group do you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they were more like gamers than yeah uh, and i yeah. take i take the um the world like kind of like seriously and i i, I step into the shoes of the character i'm playing it's it's funny <laughs> you say that because um it reminds me a lot of oh hang on i have to hide from blueberries again um okay <laughs> Yeah, it's like a, a tug of war right now. Mm. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, you, you mentioned Dungeons and Dragons, and I remember uh, a lot of people associate me being this great role player and stuff like that. And I never played Dungeons and Dragons back then. Really? Uh, yeah. I only played recently, and I was a dungeon master, so it's like I wasn't really. Uh, I've never really, I always wanted it to, but I never really played Dungeons and Dragons. So, to me, it was more, and I guess it's the difference between, Sorry. like, Sorry. your thou, 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 or whatever. Or thou, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, what your, can I say? Your traditional English is because I just played it like I was in there. I wasn't necessarily playing this oh. character. It's just me, kind of like in the Ultima, where the, the mythos is about you being transported into another dimension. Yeah. Yeah, Avatar, yep. Yeah, so, and, of course, I hardly ever played an Ultima game even back then, because wow. uh, Oblivion is, I wouldn't say my first RPG, but it's it's one of the first. Like, I, of course, I played, like, uh, Wizardry oh, back Diablo then. And Zelda. Like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I didn't... Um, I, I didn't understood them as RPGs. To, oh, like, that is, that's I, interesting. To, to me, it was just like a video game, like Mario, or wow, uh, you're just a bunch of dudes killing people. Like that—that that was the thing. Oh, that and, is interesting. Uh, okay. And Ultima, I got ult uh, into uh, Ultima Four way yeah, later. Quest of the Avatars. So yeah, cool. yeah, which is one of my favorites. <sighs> yes. Because it's the, just the, the concept of it is just strange, oh. bizarre. So I, I like that, right? Years, Dan. Yeah. So. Um, Oblivion, I mean, I played Neverwinter Nights and stuff like that. I understood Dungeons mm. and Dragons yeah. back then. So I guess uh, Neverwinter Nights was not the first role-playing game I played as a mm. role-playing game. 
but Oblivion was really the one that I obsessed over, in a way. Yeah, because it that's yep. really the first one that really not only just put you in the shoes, but because, well, hey, you know, I know I'm not all about the graphics either, but the graphics at the time, it really felt like um, like you were transported into that world. You know, kind of like how, well, like in Ultima, you're the character, the Avatar, transported there. Right. It's now literally you're in the shoes because it's in that perspective. The, the, the perspective, of the character, yeah. And it would... looked... Yeah. I wouldn't say too much about the graphics because back then uh, I was running on it on potato and uh, uh, you know oh, really? a nice 15 frames a second with the lowest oh. graphic settings oh, possible. Oh Jesus! Um, I, didn't, I didn't notice that one on your let's plays. They oh, because like that, that, no, 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 that, that's um, I was running on a far more powerful computer back then when, when with the let's plays, but oh, okay. uh, Oblivion when I first played it. I bought it on a whim. I bought it like because oh. I saw a video. It's like, oh, that looks cool. I had like a hand-me-down PC that had like a, a decent video card. And I say decent. It was like a hundred. Uh, it was either 64 megabytes or 128 megabyte of video RAM. Okay. And I had under a gig of RAM mm. and a shitty processor. And I just <laughs> okay. Well, I need I. I wasn't even sure when I bought the thing. I had to buy like a DVD player because I didn't have a DVD player on that computer. Oh, Jesus. Because okay. my equipment was all Macintosh, right? So I had to like upgrade an old PC to make it run. And I was oh, barely geez. running it. So for me, visually, uh, Oblivion was sufficient. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like, uh, you know, top of the line you know, next-gen graphics or anything like that. But you were able to still play it, and not only that, you you probably played it with with a unique uh, experience than other people, because whereas other people probably experience more of, like, it's like an action kind of RPG, I guess, because it's all, you know, it's all real-time, and, you know, if you the hit detection is if you hit them. But for you, I think you, I'm guessing, you probably had to implement different kind of strategies when you played because of the frame rate issue so bad. You probably had to do a lot of um, going, you know, going into your character file, into the inventory, and then swapping things out and changing skills during the pause. You know how when you can pause it, you can change. Yeah, pause not and much. Then play it that way. No. Uh, oh, well, wow, at okay. least as far as the like the strategy and the pausing goes, huh. um, because pausing is essentially zero frames a second. Okay, so yeah. I didn't really. <laughs> um, no, like I, 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 it's completely different, um, mm. for sure. But I, I, it didn't change the method. It only changed oh, the character okay. Uh, okay. and the experience because you would run around and suddenly a wolf would appear in front of your face, and you're like, ah, yeah. you attacked by a wolf. Because there's that frames per second again. The frame. <laughs> well, it's the draw distance too. Yeah, and the draw distance. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm. It wasn't until I upgraded my computer that I was able to really participate in archery. Ah, okay. Oh, I see what you mean now. Okay. Because a different kind of character. Um, I couldn't see that far, and mm. now like I, I, like I had problems with Skyrim because the archery mechanic, uh, the physics is different, because it has that, that weird auto aim with the the arrows. But um, really? in Oblivion, I got so good later on when I had like a more powerful computer because I would play that game uh, to yeah. death. Um, I could maximize the draw distance see a deer yeah forging, mm -hmm. like in the far distance and i would sh and uh, hit, hit it with one arrow and i was uh, ecstatic about it because i couldn't do that before my, my brother would tell me too i'm so good with like not not just with the bone arrow but with spells i can hit a fly like off like like the edge of a cliff okay he said that's how good i am because see how most people like how they aim the way I do it is I can predict where they're going to end up just by the path that the wolf or the enemy is taking. Yeah. So I shoot kind of like a little bit ahead and honestly get them like yeah, maybe 90 or 95 target. percent. Yeah. I do that time. when I play like flight simulators, uh, first person shooters and say archery, for example. Uh, mm. But as far as magic is concerned, even in Oblivion, I am a terrible shot. With mm. spells. Oh, no, I, I, I can't. Uh, I can't shoot. Wow. For shit. <laughs> well, have, have, have you seen any of my Let's Plays? My, uh, I probably my saw a couple of videos, but I would okay. say that I've. Like, if, if you were to ask me, like, if there's anything that I remember, uh, not mm, so much. It probably it's won't. been a while. Okay. 
I gotcha. Like, well, it's maybe... the first time you asked me to talk, essentially. It's been a while. Okay, got, gotcha. Because maybe what I'll do is I'll either just create some kind of um, compilation thing, or I can just, you know, share a video with you and tell you, like, at which, which point for, like, you know, the shooting part. So you can kind of see how I aim with the... How, you know the way I do it with the bow yeah, for sure. and with my and with my magic with with Falagar, the my archmage. Um, oh, I wanted to bring up uh, getting back to uh, with Nagidao, like what there was like thirty minutes ago. Minutes. Um, I was gonna say the reason why I brought him up was concerning with uh, the Witcher Three. Was when I was watching him play, it was it was absolutely hilarious, and I I kind of felt his pain because as he was playing it, you know, it went through that you know the whole tutorial thing on how to fight. Yep. And then it, the, the things would always pop up and then say how you have to, like, a silver blade for this and then a steel blade for, you know, something else. Or a silver blade, I think, is for, like, ghosts. And he's reading it in the way to, to dodge and everything. And he's reading, he's like, and uh, oh, God, I hate this already. And I just couldn't, <laughs> I, I personally couldn't help but just crack up at that because, you know, he, he's like, I hate this already. And <laughs> he's doing the combat. That's funny. It was just so bad. The, yeah, um... It's silver swords for monsters, and That's it. human it has steel. Steel, okay, or like even wolves and stuff like that is yeah. still steel. But like I think like vampires, right? Like ghosts and supernatural things was the uh, was the silver. Right. The that... um, well, I haven't played too much of it yet. Like I'm only through the tutorial for Witcher Three, but that's okay. Still, um, although I'm not too bothered by that. Um, because it was one of the ways to play Diablo 1 as well. You had, mm. um, you know, you used fireballs against uh, specific demons, and then you would use lightning bolts for others, and they were color-coded. So the blue ones, you would shoot fire, and the red ones, you would shoot lightning. And, oh, yeah, and right, right. Yeah. You had the same thing with weapons. I didn't do it too much with weapons as much, because it's just a pain in the ass to just swap them out. Because yeah. with Ohaki, right, you just have to click and drag and open your yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but, like, uh, maces were for undead and swords were for demons. Uh, axes were for zombies and... You're, you're talking about Diablo 1, right? Yes, the original. And I think okay, I don't, I don't remember, but yeah. this is just something you did for yourself, right, as, like, a rule? No, it was, I don't like, remember... statistically, that's how it plays. Really, I don't, I don't remember that. You have a that. damage bonus against undead if you use a mace. You oh, have... I must have forgot all about that. It's, it's been like that's been that long. <laughs> okay. Like it's huge. Okay, I wonder why I couldn't. Uh, I just use a sword because I love swords and daggers. Mm, uh, yeah. And like, if you want to kill Diablo uh, as a warrior, I would always go with like a sword. Okay, actually. I do remember in like Diablo 2 that so I think that's where they got that from. I think I remember something about like the 50% and then the 150%. Didn't, didn't they use that in Diablo 2? Well, there's something resistances, like but they okay. were mostly magical. I don't remember Diablo 2 having... Like, I only played a Necromancer in Diablo 2, so I don't know anything much about weapon specifics. Hmm, okay. Uh, because even the dagger was not about dealing physical damage with it as of a poison damage. Yeah. Um, which is awesome, by the way. But um, yeah. yeah, like I don't know about specifics about weapon types, but I've played Diablo one enough with a warrior that, um, yeah, it's 150. Like if you use the proper weapon for the monster type, it was 150 percent weapon damage as a bonus. Mm, okay. So. Um, yeah, I remember um, the guild I started in Diablo 1. We were the Guardian Angels, and there was another fellow sorcerer, and I can't remember his real name. You know, when, when you start this guild, we don't live, like, nearby each other. Not like in the in the TV or the web series, the guild, which they were a local guild, but um, his name might have been, like, Eric or something, and we were waiting in Tristram, and, you know, just waiting for the, you know, the other two members to show up, and he typed in the chat, I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And yeah. Yeah. Do you know where he got that line from? Oh, yeah, of it's course. Duke Nukem. Well, not only Duke Nukem, where Duke Nukem got that from. There's, there's oh, a yeah, movie. it's the uh, oh, the name of that movie. I wouldn't be able to tell you. It's a, it's a um, not a horror movie, but it's like a zombie kind of... Sci-fi. Yeah, They Live with Roddy Roddy Piper and Keith David. And um, what is her name? Uh, 
oh, I can't remember her name, but uh, she almost looked like, uh, oh, Meg Foster. Her name is Meg Foster, that's right. So Meg Foster, Keith David, and Roddy Roddy Piper, late Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah, they live. If uh, you, You've seen it or you've seen it a long time ago? Uh, I don't remember it. <laughs> okay, no, that that's a good one. It's the one where you put the shades on. You have to put the shades on to see how the aliens look like. Because otherwise, you take them off to look like humans. Oh, and when yeah, you look under, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, and you look at the bulletin boards and on the TV. Uh, it might be advertising milk on the bulletin board, but when you put the shades on, it would say like "obey." There's like a subliminal thing. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. there's <laughs> yeah. A, a few references of that too elsewhere. I, I, in a couple of other like comic books and stuff like that, where mm. you wear you wear the glasses and you see through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a good reference. But yeah, I, I just remember it from Duke Nukem. Speaking that's... of Duke Nukem, there's a, I think it's the Duke Nukem 30th anniversary. I forgot what they called it, but it's a. Um, hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can uh, look that up. Um, what's it called? Duke Nukem 3D. A oh, world tour. 30th anniversary. Uh, World Tour Edition. And what that is, it's the original Duke Nukem 3D from back in 96, was it? Or 97? But um, they added uh, one new episode, so there's like new levels, uh, new enemies, new weapons, I believe. Uh, and the original, uh, you know, composer and the original voice actor of Duke returns. Oh, nice. For new uh, one liners. So it's great. Yeah, it's available on Steam. So that's that's one I, I do have to get, and another one I want to get is uh, another game called Strife, S T R I F E, where it's kind of like a first-person game, but they implement role-playing uh, mechanics to it. Oh, okay. Have you ever played Strife? That's a good one. No, I haven't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've haven't really played much of Duke Nukem either. Oh. Because back oh, in wow, those okay. days, although I have played <laughs> it, back in those days I was. Um, a marathon player. A marathon player? Yes. Marathon is the precursor to Halo. Oh. So, and if you oh, know nice. what it plays like, it's just Halo, but in low res, essentially. Yeah. It's like flat graphics and stuff like that. Um, that's oh. what I was playing when everybody was playing Doom and Duke Nukem and all that stuff. I had my own. Yeah trilogy of games and stuff like that which is oh, i like that yeah. but i wanted to bring up too how you said how your oblivion experience of 15 frames per second was my marwind experience <laughs> I, I was trying to run that on a pentium 3 which i built myself uh, but nowadays i'm kind of behind on you know the modern stuff i know some things but not not like how it was before um but yeah i was trying to run it on a pentium 3 and um <clears throat> it just it, it would just kind of like it will move jerky and when I would try to exit, like that first boat, it just locked up. Oh, yeah? Okay, so then I'd have to take it to my friend's house, Brian, and his computer was, like, really good at the time. So you exit, and, and then you save it, and then you bring it back? Well, no, because um, I, I just started a fresh game there to try it out. He said, you know, whenever you want, you can just come over to my house, play your game, but I, I couldn't do that. I, I don't oh, okay. feel right having to just go every single time, and I, I play a lot in those days, you know. So, and the, the amount of time that I would play... Um, so I just played it like that once or twice times that I went there, but and then it wasn't until like many many years later, um, when I had already played uh, uh, Oblivion, and then went back to Marwind and then played that on my on my laptop. And I was able to because I have a powerful laptop as well, so I was able to play Marwind uh, there. And I matter of fact, I tried doing a live stream of it, yeah. and um, you you can still find it on my Archmage. Uh, Falagar channel I have I don't know how many episodes like maybe four or five episodes and they're like they're pretty long they're maybe about two three hours a piece oh, wow, okay. but but I got a new desktop and I was not able to figure out how to transfer my save file and it's not there's there's literally no save folder nothing okay and even when I transfer the whole place where the Marwin game is and transfer it to the, it's not there the save file is just not there so when I play uh, Morwin again. I'm gonna to have to start all the way from the beginning, and of course, I played Mage, and I was kicking ass. It was is such that a shame the, to lose that do, character. Do you own Morwin from Steam, or do you own it from uh, the, the, yeah, the original the CD? The CD, and um, 
but even when I tried it, you know, transferring it with the CD, uh, it still didn't work. Huh. You, you know what I mean? And, but because now the, I own the, it on the, the save, because if you have it on an original CD, the mm. save file is within the Morin folder, but on Steam, it's in the Steam folder, not really Morin folder. Yeah. I didn't. There wasn't on. I, I mean, think so. It, like I, I, I don't really. own the Morin on Steam, but. Oh, okay. my knowledge, no, I think that's what it's supposed to do. Well, if next time if you could check and see, because I, I was looking stuff up about that, and they said that it was the actual save folder is like hidden, and there's some way to get it to be unhidden. Oh, okay. But I I did it, and it's it's it was like, okay. it was still hidden. So I don't know what they were talking about. But it's funny you say that your first time playing Morrowind was at 15 frames a second, because I don't know if you're yeah. my original videos. Um, it's about the same thing too. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, right? For you, but yeah, I, and yeah, I really yeah. wanted to play this game. I had my iron. I even bought the special collector's edition. Or I should actually do a showcasing of it. It's a big PC box, and oh, wow. it came with the soundtrack. And oh, yeah, so I have the the special edition of, of Morwin, and I couldn't play it. But ever since then, but since then, I got that. Um, what is this here? The Morwin Game of the Year edition, which comes with, you know, of course, Morwin. And Tribunal and Blood Moon. Wow. Whole so, collection. Yeah. The whole collection, of course, yeah. And yeah, going to Solstheim is great. And being able to revisit the place again in Skyrim, because that's where Dragonborn takes you. It takes you to Solstheim. And you'll recognize, you know, when you first, um, uh, I think, uh, where was it? Uh, Fort, was it Fort Moonmoth? You, do you, you remember Fort Moonmoth, right? I in remember, yep. Yeah, you you were, can revisit that place when you get to Solstheim. The whole oh, island is sweet. open, and you can revisit the place. But it's years ahead, and you can see certain things. I won't say what are in ruins. Um, I never beat, like I said, I never beat Dragonborn, but you know, I I just messed around with it. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and that was when it was on the 360. It's funny because my copy of Morrowind is a uh, a you know cheap you know bundle from like a. Uh... Huh. Like a cracker box, essentially. It was like it doesn't. Oh. Need, it says Morwin on the disc, just to say like what the game is, but yeah. the the cover is like um, this, the disc itself is like purple or something like that. Oh, it, because it's like it, a bootleg. It, no, no, no. It's not bootleg, but it, it was just so bundled up with like other low. I was gonna say low value. But, <laughs> um, it came not in so a famous. series of discs. Uh, of different old games packed mm. together mm. and it, I think it was like five to six CDs in a bundle and each CD was its okay. own game like from a flight simulator Morrowind okay. was there and uh, each disc has like their own different color I think it was like uh, one's purple the other one's yellow one of them is green and it was like a blitz pack essentially and Morrowind was part of it oh, and nice. I bought the blitz pack because of the flight simulator that was in there, because I wanted to play that. Oh, and it, what a nice surprise to have Marwind, to discover Marwind in there. Oh, I just didn't care at the time. <laughs> didn't care that, yeah, but uh, wow, that's uh, great. Yeah, I, because back then I was a uh, flight simulator guy. If it wasn't a strategy mm. game, I was uh, playing flight sims. Wow, okay. Because RPGs for me, it was just not a thing. Like it was just not the kind for, of games that I would play because I just didn't know it existed. Like I knew games. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah. So yeah, like you said, it was Diablo that got kind of got you into the, I guess like the RPG. Even though it's kind of like um, like a, I don't want to say action RPG, but. Well, that's I guess, it is. Well, it's like okay. Okay, first we, we established last time that it's like oh, it's getting okay, roguelike, but yeah. Um, yeah. It defined the action RPG, so it's okay That's to it. put that go. because okay. it's the reason why I say that is I'm thinking forward with Diablo two and three how those are even more action I guess compared. Yes, and it's like okay. when you look at it like for me as a uh, purist if you want to call it that like a yeah. fan yeah. of what Diablo was inspired by, I'm mm. kind of sad to see the evolution of Diablo two mm. three the way it went. But at the same time, I'm not surprised because of Diablo 1, the way it is, compared to, say, a traditional roguelike and stuff like that. So you just see the curve of action just rising up. Mm, I'm not I surprised. Um, but yeah, like Diablo was... 
probably the first game that got me hooked about playing like a character in a setting and uh, you, know, you know besides like say Mario or Sonic or, or whatever um, where it was me against the world essentially mm. and yeah. uh, Oblivion and the hero. Oblivion kind of solidified that as okay I love RPGs kind of thing because um, okay. I knew the difference back then between uh, Fallout and Diablo. Because of course, Fallout yeah. came out it's like a strategy. Well, it was strategy, but uh, which was one of the things that got me interested in Fallout. Because it's a strategy, but because mm. I played strategy games. But to me, strategy games were like the Warcraft or Civilization or Master of Orion. Mm. Uh, those kind of, uh, you know, Age of Empires, those kind of things. And so Fallout was kind of like weird because it was like an in-between. Uh, and I knew that compared to Diablo, it was kind of falling short because like turn-based combat was, mm. to me, um, deprecated. Like it wasn't Keep a keen eye open. not worth my time, but... I already knew back then I had a limited time to play games because I just wanted to devote myself to like a game or two. Mm. So, um, to me, Diablo One and Fallout were very similar. You know, top dog games, you had to kill stuff. Um, Fallout was had more depth, for sure, but I thought it was yeah. brought it was brought down because of the turn-based combat, as strategic as it yeah. was. So to me, when I had to make a choice, is like if I wanted to play a strategy game, I'll just play Warcraft or I'll play Age of Empires. Mm, I, didn't okay. need, I didn't need that hybrid. I see and, what you mean. Okay. Which kind of, they brought that, I guess, maybe it's not the same. I haven't played any of the those um, the isometric uh, Fallout games. My, I started Fallout with Fallout 3. Oh, okay. And then, of course, and then went to 4. I did not play New Vegas, which arguably people are saying is the best. I, I don't know. That's by Obsidian, but uh, they, you know, they kind of brought the the Vats thing back because I've seen footage, you know, of the original Fallout's with the, <clears throat> with the, you know, the isometric and then the pausing and then yes. the different percentage chance to hit. Mm -hmm. So they kind of did that with the, and I, I pause a lot. I like, I love that thing. I love, <laughs> I love using the Vats. Well, it's one of the things that I really um, appreciate about Fallout Three is the fact that mm. it managed to. It's very Bethesda as a game, mm. but it managed to keep a lot of its essence, yes, despite the fact go. that it changed developer. Yes. Which yeah, for, people would argue it's not the case with Diablo 3, for example, because it's not the same team, same developer with a different team. And mm. a lot of people would say, oh, in Diablo 3, it lost the essence of Diablo 2 and whatnot. But with Fallout 3, the fact that that's... I kind of wish that other first-person RPGs could use a system like that. Because it would marry both, like, the strategy aspect of, yeah. uh, uh, like, say, the, the, you know, the Pillars of Eternity or the... Um, what's the other one? Divinity First Sin of yeah, the RPGs, but in first person, that. right? But yeah. um, the thing is, that it's so perfect <clears throat> in Fallout 3 that it doesn't fit anywhere else, as much as I want it in other games. Yeah, and, it's, and, in, it's, and in, have you played 4, Fallout 4 yet? I have it installed and ready but to have go, not played? but I haven't launched it okay. yet. Okay, I got Let's Plays of those, by the way, too. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, if you remember the vats of Fallout 3, is absolutely it paused it like it yeah and this one like kind of slows it down instead yeah like yeah i'm, it's I'm not different. too sure about that one i'll have it, to experience it to really before it, i condemn it, it. it. <laughs> yeah it, it's what's kind of cool though you you won't really notice it because it, it gives it that more sense of urgency that you have to get the shot off a little bit but you know at least it's like but yeah you know what i mean instead of just leaving it paused and you can walk away and use the bathroom or whatever um, otherwise, if you just want to pause it, you can just pause it and then do those things. But um, the thing is, too, with the VATS is explained why you can do that is through the Pip-Boy. That's why it's vault-assisted vault, vault assisted 
or what is it, Voltec assisted targeting, something like that. Yeah, um, it's the, targeting it, system. Yes. Targeting system. It's the vats that, or it's the pip boy that enables you to to pause like that. You know what I mean? I I don't know how that would, you like, know, how they can in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. How? Yeah. How? How they would um for like other games, like other RPGs, to utilize the same thing, you know, like how you were just saying. Yes. To, the pause, yeah, without having the vats, like how would it work for like, um, like a well, like Skyrim, or you know what I mean, or like yeah. an, the next fantasy RPG, unless they're doing it just to do it. And what, what I like that's one of the things why I like the pausing thing because there's like an explanation why you're able to pause and then target the different thing and have the percentage is because of the vats, yeah. It's it's to, like I was saying, like it's very Fallout, yeah, to do that. Yeah. So it makes sense. Like you couldn't have a Diablo game with it because Diablo was not turn-based or anything like that. It would add strategic mm. aspects to it. But in the you know Diablo one had some strategy behind it, but it's like it's mm. not as in depth as Fallout, and you have to as recognize that even as like for me as a fan. Um, mm. But yeah, like I, I made the choice back then to play Diablo one because I, I, I love the aesthetics of it. Uh, yeah. Fantasy was more my thing, anyways. Yeah. And um, yeah, but then Oblivion came up, and that made me kind of look at RPGs in uh, in general and say, "Yeah, I really like it, and I could play more." And you know, I haven't played much of Fallout Two and One mm. since, but I, I appreciate them a lot more now. Yes, um, and there's a lot of strategy you use in Diablo when you're playing multiplayer, especially if you're all different classes. The things that you can do. Well, it varies. Um, in Diablo three, I would argue not so much, mm. because. Well, well I'm talking about in Diablo one. Yeah, in Diablo like, one, strategy. Like I, I'm trying to think back because I, I played a lot of Diablo to, one, but it's like most of it now is like because I don't play on Battle.net anymore. Yeah, uh, because most of There's my a... memories are about player killing and survival. Oh man, uh, I don't remember uh, co-op as there's, much there's as Diablo. A, there's a story I can tell with uh, even though I wasn't part of this party, but uh, named a guy named Jason Steiger who worked at Computer Renaissance, um, and he played a lot of Diablo as well. And he was telling me uh, one of the adventures he had last night with it was it was him and three other friends, and they were fighting the butcher. And what they did was, his friend was like a warrior, so he was up close to the door, would open the door, and he was the sorcerer. He would throw down a firewall, and then the warrior would shut the door, okay, and then open it again, and then throw down another firewall, oh, shut the funny. door, open, you know, and then just yeah. blanket the whole thing with, uh, with firewalls. And then when the thing died out, then they would just both rush in and just kind of mop up. Because it's a kind of very dangerous thing to do because the fireballs of the sorcerer can hit and yeah. kill the warrior. So what I would do, uh, and you can do this solo, mm. is um, when you find the butcher's lair, mm. look around for any room that has um, fences because you can shoot mm. through those. Oh, So yes. what you do is you open it. Yes. You you clear it out of any enemies that might that, that might hide in like in barrels and stuff like that. And what you do is you open the uh, the butcher's uh, door, and mm. then you you run because he'll Go follow you anyways. You close the door yeah. and then you just wail on him. Yeah, because he'll he'll try to get past the fence somehow. Yeah, and if you're really <laughs> sneaky, because I was able to do that uh, back in those days, is mm. I would lure him in the room and then lock him oh. inside. Okay. And then go out and then just shoot him. And then shoot him. And it's like, oh, I'm out of mana. So you, you can easily go back in town, buy some potions, and come back. And he's still in the in the prison. Yeah. So you just keep shooting. Um, oh, man. He can open doors. But, well, but so the, long AI, you... the AI is kind of stupid. So yeah. Only so long as it's not near it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But the strategies, I, I thought that, like, to me, I found that Diablo 2 had more, like, team based strategies than Diablo 1. Mm. I mean, I say that probably because I have played Diablo 1 more as a single player. Well, I still played online on Battle.net, but I, I played it more as a 
survival of the fittest kind of game and I didn't know anybody uh, within my circle of friends to play with so most of the people that we play with were like the, the oh, I just killed a monkey whoops um, <laughs> yeah I hate accidentally hitting NPCs in this game it's happened before well I, I, just... I, 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 well, <laughs> I just I was swinging in the middle of nowhere and I was looking down and I just didn't realize that there was something there moving mm. and then I just re yeah I didn't notice there was a monkey anyways um, so yeah I f like with the necromancer with the way you could like summon walls and stuff like that to me opened oh the up, bone wall yeah. yeah the bone walls uh, um, opened up a lot more um, strategic I see that. Even, even like yeah. as a solo player, where you can imprison your your boss monster, and then yes. um, uh, Iron Maiden, the curse. Yes. Put that on yes. him, and then he would have to hit. He would attack the the bone wall, and he the would get him, and himself hurt by go it. back to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's funny how the what you just talked about there. Um, I guess how, what would you call it? Um, um, where where it's a, a a skill that you use in conjunction with another skill. Uh, a there's synergy. a word for that. Uh, like a synergy. That's it. A synergy skill. I kind of would do that in Oblivion, where you, you cast a weakness to magic, a weakness to fire, and then you do like a fire touch, you know, or something like that. Right. You know, like entropy, or you know, a weakness to poison, is it? And then you do an entropy. It's and um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it was one of the things that I didn't take too much advantage of while playing Oblivion. Because oh, I, I realized, yeah. like, as much as, oh, that cool, you can craft spells and stuff like that, uh -huh. uh, for some reason I'm terrible at it. Oh, and, oh I um, love that. So, like, I, I love it too, I just couldn't really found a use for it. So most of my spells were, like, the basic, like, uh, fireball or whatever the game would give me. Um, and it just turned out that sometimes, like, I think the best spell I ever came up with, and everybody did it at least once, was the summon full armor spell. Yeah, where, bound, you know, yeah. you bound everything into one spell, and I could barely yes. use it because it, I didn't have the magicka for it. But, mm. you know, whatever. Like, um, it was. I didn't play that many wizards, now that I think back on it. Wow. It's like the majority that I would play. I would that, and then um, and then I would love playing assassin characters. You, you might recall, um, I, I would play like assassin-like characters, but not so much like a thief. I would combine like thief assassin together. Okay. If you recall, remember I would ask a lot of questions about how to play that thief or how you would play your thief. Yep. Like, would do you kill as a thief? So I found that very interesting concept. So I started playing like that, and I had a lot of fun with that, just by avoiding combat um, and just not killing. You know, just pickpockets steal shit off tables and you know, rob houses and then just run away um so I, you know I, I love that and I, I would literally play where i don't kill um but I, I would always go back to playing the mage like it would be like um like 70 80 percent of the time i would be doing mages and then the other maybe 30 or 40 percent of the time is like assassin yeah i mean it's you know understandable you found your calling essentially yes so my why... calling <laughs> Why uh, force it, uh, you know, to change? Uh, in in the same way as, like, for me, as much as I love sl flinging spells and stuff like that, uh, my calling is not so much killing stuff, although I do love it, but it's yeah. just like, <laughs> you know, I like to be the bastard of oh, the group, right? I, that is funny. I don't picture that with you. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I can't... <laughs> Oh, well, go, go on. <laughs> no, but it's like, yeah. I mean, I, I it's, it's because of, I, I'm assuming it's because I, you know, I talk slowly, I'm nice to people, kind of thing. Yeah. In a way, um, my alter ego is uh, not that I have like a character per se, but it's more like uh, the. Man, I have a weird bug with the camera now. What the freaking hell? Okay. Um, well, you should just, you should see the bug that uh, Gary um, came across, where it took her into some kind of chessboard Twilight Zone thing. I don't know if that ever happened to you, 
but she has it recorded and maybe I'll I'll find that video and then I'm gonna share it it wasn't too long ago it's like a couple of weeks ago and you can see that that glitch well the the, the glitch I found was like it, it happened twice today uh, okay. while talking to you actually is that the, okay. when I would uh, mount hmm. uh, you know I play in first person right and okay, when yeah. you summon your mount the camera pulls back yes yeah but the bug is that I don't know how You're running. far no 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 I'm not running oh. I have a horse but the thing is that my camera pulls back so far away it's like it appears say that you're like a mile away from town mm. and you want to ride your horse the camera would spawn in town and then would just kind of oh follow a path around the terrain to get back to your horse where you're sitting oh it's too bad you didn't have that recorded. No, but I'm sure it's going to happen a couple of times again, so I'll try to yeah. find it. Again. That's just weird. I've seen the one, I mean, I don't know, it's not really a major bug or anything, just maybe a, a graphical glitch, but uh, people running on top of their horses as the horse is going. Yes, I've going. seen yeah, that. That's yeah. a weird one. <laughs> I have, I, yeah. It happens not too frequently, but it happens, most of the time that it happens to me, it's in Cyrodiil. Because it's just mm, lag oh, and okay. stuff like that. I see. It's a server okay. and a graphic thing, so... It's kind of neat, but... <laughs> because it basically, the way I understand it is that y your your client is waiting for the server to tell you that you're on a horse, but your horse. client just doesn't care also. So it spawns mm. the horse because the server says, yeah, you're fine on the horse, but for some reason it just doesn't... You're still just, running. Yeah, you're still just trying <laughs> to run. Um... It's weird when you start to look that in code. It's just sometimes mm. you get anomalies like that. But yeah, yeah, to get back to what I was trying to say. Um, oh yeah. The alter ego thing. I. You know, like you mentioned uh, a while back, where you you in a fantasy world you can't. Sh uh, well, in the real world, you can't fire um, spells and stuff like that, but you kind of want that yeah. in your fantasy, so you play a caster. That's what you yeah. you uh, uh, attach to, in a way. Oh, yeah. And for me, it's like, well, I'm a nice guy, so here's one thing I wouldn't be able to do is, you know, backstab people. Yes. In a figurative sense, so I steal a lot when I play video games. I... Uh, I won't necessarily grief other players, but I will, um, th for other players, I, I would try and kind of have annoyed them, or I mm. would um, just be sneaky about it. Uh, I remember, uh, in, I don't remember which game though, but I told them like I would send them like a, 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 a nice potion for a heal. And I gave him a, a wrong potion, essentially, oh, on, on purpose. purpose. Yeah, and okay. it wasn't a poison or anything like that, but because it, it, it had healing capabilities in it, but it also had like a a, um, a disadvantage to the heal. <laughs> and uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's the healing, right? And the yeah. disadvantage was bigger than the heal itself. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to figure out the name of that game, but. Yeah, it's um, you know I have those moments, but yeah, it, when it when it comes to NPCs, I like to not kill them, but I, I like to like take the gold, um, see what I can get away with, kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Um, because that's my dungeon essentially, right? It's yeah. I don't I don't want to know if I can kill the boss. I want to know if I can get away with uh, <clears throat> stealing stuff. You know, so yeah. I'll try to find like that goblet. It's not worth a thing, but I did it. But anyways. you just want to take it. Yeah. There, there is a movie by Dead Gentleman Productions, and maybe you've heard of it. It's called The Gamers. Yes. And their sequel, The Gamers: Darkness Rising. Darkness I take it you've seen them both. Yep. Okay, They're the first amazing. one that that master thief. He says, if you recall, in the bar, he says... Um, I want to take the guy's I'm, pants. Pants. Yes. yes, you remember. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Why do you need his pants? I don't need them. I just want to see if I could take them. It's exactly like, <laughs> see, yeah. It's like, that's a, the yeah. typical uh, thief character right there. Yes. 
Uh, oh, so, God, I love it. I, mean, I laughed like when only... I saw that scene because that's totally yeah. me. Oh, man, this is great. I, you're like probably one of the very few, really, who, uh, maybe two people that I know that have seen that game. And uh, not the game, the, the gamers, you know, that film. So this is great. Yeah. Well, it was one of the uh, movies. I wouldn't say that introduced me to the concept. Mm. But it was where I could see a humorous side of that reality, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I had people explain it to me. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't really see it because I was just either never available or I didn't have the friends that were interested in that sort of thing. Oddly enough, now oh, wow. they are and they're like super far away, so we can't. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and are you aware that there's actually the Gamers 3, uh, Hands of Fate? I, I watched it, and it's just not as great as the other ones. It's still enjoyable as a movie. It, yeah, you, I guess you got to watch it like a second time, a third time. When I saw it, I enjoyed it, but I was like, okay. But then after some time passed, I watched it again. It is much enjoyable. It's more of Cass. I think his name's Cass, right? His story. Yeah, the, the thing is, it's not as much as Dungeons & Dragons as it is like no, a, a right. parallel universe with cards cards yeah so for me it was like eh, okay you kind of lost some of its charms it gained some other charm mm. but, yes. uh, it wasn't what i expected when i, I it's kind of like diablo you know when you, you're you're expecting diablo 2 and you play it's like oh it's amazing and then you because the production quality for darkness rising was uh, pretty high yeah it was so uh, good. Oh. good stuff uh and then you go with three and it's like well it's a different movie right it's a different yeah it, it was like an, a whole cg backdrop or something right or like blue blue screen when they would go into like oh, well the, there's that i guess the card world but I'm, I'm also talking about just the idea of the story itself you kept the characters mm. yeah the, the the story has nothing to do with say dungeons and dragons i mean they, they wanted it was about tabletop gaming essentially yeah right yeah uh so he broadened the um and I was expecting a little bit more of a specific uh, experience, essentially. So Hope. I was a little bit disappointed, but I still saw quality into it. Hope, hopefully, when if when and if they make a fourth one, it will pick up where somehow I don't know how they'll do it. But remember, but then it really have to be like a, a fantasy thing, not their imagination imagination anymore. But remember, they swapped places, the players and. The characters, you know, the, the the players went into the world where the shadow was was. Yeah, um, yeah. the think, shadow. Yeah. The shadow. <laughs> oh, I, love I that. still make that reference, and people still look at me they're really weirdly because they're like, "What the hell are you talking about?" The shadow, the shadow, the shadow. I, I love shadow, that. Yeah. Or, or how about in the first one, uh, the warrior could not could not lift the uh, that whatever that um. It's, is it a portcullis? But uh, you know the the bard the bars, you know, off the oh yeah off yeah. The thing. The mage with comes your, and does it. Rolls a twenty. Your legs, not your back. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, Actually, man. my favorite scene is um, when they say they they look at the wizard and they say, "Aren't you forgetting something?" It's like what? Oh. <laughs> your terrible fear of uh, water. Yes. And oh. uh, yeah, yeah, and then he starts <laughs> yeah. screaming, and then they try to knock him out, and the warrior yes. just like kills him outright. Love it. Oh. Yeah, because they're they're calculating damage. Yeah, says, I'm dead. Yeah, and oh, you know, the, the elf tries it and just knocks him out. Just like, <laughs> uh, and you hear the dice roll. Yeah, I love that. Well, it, and, like it's a nice touch. It's it's really. I love scary. that. It 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 honestly it, it kind of took me back. Yeah. Well, as back, one I, that never played Dungeons and Dragons until recently, uh, hmm. I couldn't. Like that was my outlet. That was my way of experiencing experience. the dragon. Yeah. Uh, because what a great way to experience, though. I've only played. I've only started playing like earlier this year, and I say playing as in we've played it one weekend. Mm. And we played Pathfinder one one tutorial session of Pathfinder, and mm. one tutorial session of Fifth Edition D and D, and I was the DM both times. That's amazing. We if. If ever you're up for it, you know, um, if you want to give it, give another shot, maybe we can 
gather like uh, I don't know how many people would be willing to do this or how many people you know here online to to do this but I like well, I don't know if you know this but my gaming group all like slowly like moved away you know what I mean they we all kind of um, kind of broke off our DM Joe uh, had a stroke so his whole Ooh. right side was paralyzed and he was a phasic now so you know he's not he, he's not like quite all there you know sorry to say but and um, yeah, and then little by little, you know, like Brian and his wife moved to Florida. Um, so, we, you know, we kind of drifted apart, you know. Right. But, yeah, so I don't have that gaming group any longer, sadly. But if, if you want to give it a try and you be the DM, would you be up for something like that, possibly? I mean, I, I don't know how many would have to gather, like... Yeah, well, you need, well, depending on the, the rule set, you need at least okay. four other players. Yeah, Jesus. So five, five, because you need... Dungeon D and D, as far as I understand it, with the rules, and I, I guess that's why I took the the, the mantle of the DM, is that mm. I'm kind of a um, I'm the rule book errata guy. Yeah. Right. If anybody has any disputes about what's really in the rules for a game, I'm I tend to know everything essentially. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, um, I think. You need, like, it's mostly balanced. The campaigns are mostly balanced mm. for, like, four players. At least for Dungeons & Dragons. I don't know about Pathfinder and stuff like that. I would be interested. Mm. Um, the only thing is that it would have to be uh, pre-made campaigns. Because I don't sure, have the course. time to... Yeah, to generate one. Yeah, he would to, make up his to, own campaign. To, to was... make that kind of, kind of content. Like, I'm already busy with my own game development. Of so it's like, I wouldn't be able or or capable to do that, especially like as a newbie. Uh, mm. I, I don't know necessarily how to deal with that. But, um, mm. and that's another thing. Like, if you guys, or if you can find some friends that yeah. uh, wouldn't mind dealing with like a DM that that would be his first time. DMing, oh, um, hey, because you know, DMing like know a bunch of close friends, it's one thing. But when it comes to, um, for lack of a better word, like strangers, it's kind of different. <clears throat> so we have my brother right now. So there's two. Um, if I could get guys like, um, I don't know if Gary G would be interested. I can ask her. I can certainly ask. Um, but there's another gentleman, uh, Don Star and Dean. Uh, there's a possibility they might be interested in another uh, another gentleman named Crook Dog. Uh, his name is TJ. Um, I can float them the idea and see what they say. Yeah. If they'd be interested. Uh, fill them up on that. Uh, yeah. I would be interested. Uh, okay. It would just be a matter of trying to figure out, like, when can we do this kind of thing. Sure, of course. And um, it's not like, it doesn't have to be like um, um, extruded. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, campaign. You could just, you know, you can make it as short as possible if you want. You know, just something that can last like a few hours, right? Something like that, or well, the, hours, the, you know, uh, if, you, if you like. The I own the tutorial of the the Dungeons and Dragons like fifth edition rulebook, mm. uh, uh, and yeah. it's actually a fairly lengthy campaign. Yeah. Okay. So hey. if I'm you guys w would be interested in that. Uh, sure. Uh, my other group couldn't finish it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, because it was yeah. so long. We, we, we spent it one day on one, and the other day mm -hmm. it was on the other tutorial, which yeah. was a lot smaller, because it was just like, hey, explore a cave. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, we, we can well, go with small bite-sized kind of stuff. Uh, we can yeah. do that one. And make it make it a regular thing because there was a time too with, with this group we would get together every like week or two you know there would be a designated designated day when we would all get together and just do a hangout and talk right. but I mean we could do this instead and it's kind of funny too how you said that you know if so, so long as we don't mind you know playing with uh, I guess you said inexperienced uh, DM uh, number one I don't think they would really notice and two it's it's more of like the way I see it is and to even bring this up in that gamers uh, film um, it's it's the DM that kind of, um, you know, can kind of like uh, wave certain rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. The DM kind of comes up with, you know, the DM really isn't, I guess, wrong. And number three, I don't pay attention too much to the technical stuff. This is why I don't make a good uh, DM. I just play the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I let you tell the story and whatever happens. 
Right. And whatever the dice rolls, yeah. Did the, yeah, I'm actually kind of good at um, faking rules. Mm, hey. Um, as a matter of fact, there was um, a couple of times where, because after our, our play session in Dungeons & Dragons and even Pathfinder, uh, mm. we have, like, post games uh, commentary where everybody feels like <laughs> how did you feel about playing this game it's like oh it's, it's amazing I did this and then did that and once in a while I would just tell them that that's made up or that was in a rule <clears> book <throat> but it didn't really explain why so we did it this way and they're like oh I didn't yes. uh, I didn't feel the difference or anything like that so yes. th- but I, I feel like because we've known each other for uh, almost 15 years, if not more, I was able mm. also to, like, there's, you kind of know what kind of player they are after spending time with them so long, so I was able to um, know how fast or how slow I should go kind of thing, mm. or what kind of rule set would bother them, or, you know, one of them has, you like, catered. a short... Yeah, you, you cater to your crowd, as a yeah. DM, and I say this like I'm like I'm pro, but not really. Uh, it's just well, something that you pick up, like almost like it, it makes sense, right? Absolutely. Um, and I know, like one of them, for example, um, I let him be the. Um, he was his character was like pre-made because he didn't really want to bother creating a character because it takes too long. He picked mm. up one of the the uh, starter pre-made characters, and it was like a folklore hero. And he liked the mm. idea of just pretending to be like the the hot stuff, essentially. <laughs> and yeah. um, because of his attention span, um, there was one time where, for some reason, he wanted to shoot his sword through a bow. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And he asked me, like, can I do this? And I wanted him to understand because he, he, we were all fairly new to the, to playing Dungeons and Dragons. It was our first time for all of us, but mm. he was the newest in terms of concept. Mm. Okay. Because he played video games, but in terms of video games, you know, oh no, you can't drink too much potions because the rules say you have a cooldown or whatnot, or you you can't run so fast because your character has a point five speed or whatever, like it doesn't, right? Yeah. Uh, but in terms of Dungeons & Dragons, there's no real limit. There you go. So I told him, um, I'm not going to stop you from trying to shoot your sword through a bow. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you're going to suffer. Make it. Yeah. That doesn't mean like you're going to be able to do it. I'm right. just not going to stop you from doing it. Because my job is not to stop you to do that. You're supposed to have fun. Do whatever you want to do. Exactly, yes. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to do it. So basically, I made a number in my head. You know, like I, I, In my mind, he was going to fail. Okay. Uh, but he but pulled you, a 20. A natural 20 is always, technically, I guess, like always a success. It's always a success, if not a critical so- uh, success. So... In my mind, I was like, okay, he made it happen, therefore, I have to allow that. Yeah. To reward him from stupidity, for lack of a better term. Yeah. It's like, still, he wanted to have fun, so I I allowed it. Um, I broke his bow, and I broke the string and all of that, because you shot a sword through a bow. Right. Uh, But you did it. But he, he impaled the dude. Um, and it was like also in terms of distance, it wasn't that far. So I figured, mm. you know what? It's almost like he threw it <clears throat> at the dude. So I was like, it's fine. Uh, he impaled him. Um, and and that's the thing with these kind of games. Yeah, you can you can come up with stuff like with that scenario that you can't do it in any other game. Yeah, like like a PC game. I expected him to fail, and I figured like I was <laughs> like, oh you. Your, your, your bow just explodes in shards and your sword just yeah. falls to the ground and you cut your finger or something but none of that happened because he rolled 20 so we all laughed and that's the whole point so I'm okay to DM yeah. I actually did so um, if you can find the people yeah. 
And then if we can uh, figure out a way to time it. Hell yes. And uh, I think we can make it happen. Okay, and there's even Nagidal as well. I can even ask him, because it seems like it might be his thing. Sure. Uh, it would just be a question of schedule, because I think yeah. he's on the side of the world. Yes, I think he said he's in, um, I think in, uh, like, Germany or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. just check up on that uh, with him. Because um, we're, we're yeah, a lot closer in time. Me. Yeah, we're a lot closer. I think we have the same time. Oh. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. So it's like 10, 14 where you're at, at night? Uh, okay, we have one hour difference. One hour difference. Uh, it's 11. It's 11, right. okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. So so this is perfect. The, the t I see what, yeah, our timing is, is, like, fits in well, for us at least. Right. Okay. Um, well, um, I think I'm going to eat. I, I've been on for a while. <laughs> I'm actually going to go to bed. Yeah, uh, I'm going to eat so. a little snack. Not not nothing too heavy, but it's it's been a while. I've I've been at this for probably at least two three hours. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say it's pretty much yeah same thing. I got three thousand alliance points from killing people. Oh nice! Next so. time when you come on here, we got to get together and you know go to a place where we have maybe Orsinium or something. I you don't know? own that yet. But oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, and it's a single player thing, as uh, I think. Is it? I think so. I don't, don't, don't know for sure. Don't, don't forget, it is on sale until the twenty-first yeah, for twenty-first. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna buy it. Um, I'm actually gonna. Uh, I'm considering like resubscribing anyways, so uh, I might just have it unlocked at that yeah. point. But um, no, but not only that, but like I can sh also give you a hand with some stuff on your end. Yes. But um, once you catch up to the uh, Dominion, I haven't done much of the Dominion stories. Ah, quests. okay. Hell yes. And, and, and what's great is I, I remember you mentioned one time before because uh, you did a, a like a special Let's Play thing, uh, how you're like a slow player at, you know, quote unquote slow player. <laughs> But I'm kind of similar, so that works out. Yeah, yeah I, and I, I, I actually, spend most of my time in PvP anyways, so... Okay, because I, I listen, I take the time to listen to, uh, and, uh, Gare, if you're watching this, um, I don't mean any offense, but, uh, like, our, our, our guild leader, Gary, when we try to co-op together, and you have to see it, I mean, I have all these special Let's Plays uploaded, look for the ones that have Gary G, you know, in the title, she gets frustrated with me because, um, okay, Sam, just click, click, okay, okay, don't listen to it, don't sit there and wait for That's the NPCs. Funny. And I sit there and I'm and I'm like interacting with them and she's listening on the, you know, we're talking on Skype, like how you and I are doing it. And <laughs> she's getting, That's you, funny. you have to hear, it. yeah. So she's, come on, come on. And she's like, I'm here already. So she, as you can tell, she doesn't role play it at all, quite, quite like how I do it. And so, yeah, I guess we're somewhat yeah. closer in that regard where we actually listen to the NPCs and find, you know, find a story involved. And yeah. I get into it all, so... There's a different mindset when, you know, it comes to playing video games. Uh, I, a close friend of mine had the misfortune of... I mean, he, he had good friends, mm. uh, because we still know them. But, like, when he got introduced to World of Warcraft, yeah. uh, he didn't know how to play until oh. he was level 60. Oh, wow. Because okay. it was... He was literally following his friends. Okay, you click here, you pick that up, you do this, we kill this, and they were leading the way in terms of I gotcha. how to do quests in which order. Yeah. Uh, so go in that town, pick all the quests, and then we'll go here, 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 and here, and yeah. then you'll come back and you'll be done. Yeah. And uh, he played like that throughout um, one or two years like that. And then there, his, his friends were you know, busy with raids and stuff like that and pretty much abandoned him in that like end game but not really limbo and um, he was telling me stories about that and I was like oh my god you should have been with me although I didn't know him at the time mm. because we were only three sombreros three guys that just basically um, had our fingers up our noses and just you know ran around like lunatics yeah um, and 
when we played Elder Scrolls Online for the first time, uh, he th- thought it was refreshing to just be able to go. walk around. And I told him, like, yes. we're going to play together. I'm listening to the guy talking. Yes. And um, stuff like, you shut up on Skype when I do this because I'm trying to listen to the dude. It's like, okay. There we go. And he got, like, for- not forced, but he experienced another way of... He actually experienced the story of the game, which which is unfortunate with, I guess, kind of like how Diablo 2 has become, if you notice. Like, you remember yeah, how you are talking about that pattern? People are yep. more of going through to quickly jump to the end boss just to get to Act 5, and then it's all Act 5, and they skip, like, the stuff in the story. They just, they just, um, you know, you know what I mean? They just kind of, um, they, they, they rush through it. That's why there are games called, like, Rush. Like, Rush Me Please or Rush yeah, Act speed 5. Speedruns, yep. Speedruns, that's it. Whereas, you know, they missed the story now. Now, okay, at the beginning, you had no choice. You know, when the game was first new, you had to actually go through the story. But it's kind of evolved into that, so it's kind of sad for the newer players to get into the game. They probably skipped when all that meta, experience. Yep. Yeah. So, but which the, is similar with time, that. Yeah. At the same time, I don't think it was so much the story that he was allowed to experience. Okay. Uh, because in certain uh, certain cases, as the Elder Scrolls guy of the group, I was the guy who, oh, you see that statue over there? That's the statue of this dude, and ah. this happens and that happens. I was basically his yeah. tour guide as he I was like running that. around. Um, but the thing is, is that it allowed him to just look around. Yeah. But I, I was referring more to before he met you, when he was running with that other group that kind of abandoned him. Yeah, was, yeah, 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 but like I'm, like I'm saying, thing. like, with me around, it wasn't so much that he was no, able yeah. to experience more of the story, it's just that he was oh, able oh, to just ex- be within that world and exist. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, we, you know, took time to fish, uh, we took <laughs> so, explore, yeah. uh, like, a cave and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. that's the kind of experience that he never knew, like, he knew that, that it existed in MMOs, it's just yes. it's not something that he was a part of. And to be frank, like me neither. Like I'm a I'm a Diablo guy, so where does that come from? I, it's just a matter of like, yeah, I'm trying to. Yes. You know, there's that. there's a wooden plank over there. Why? There's a boat. Let's explore the boat. And it's like, yes. oh, okay. Oh, so. Um, yeah. So with that, I am gonna go. Yeah. As will I. As will I. Um, and I'm going to log off, and I, I don't know if I'm able to squeeze a session of Skyrim. I may, just to record something new, to have new material. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, I, but I don't know, I may just go to sleep after I eat a uh, little or watch yeah. movie. <laughs> oh, hey, Gix, man, it's always a pleasure talking with you. It's always fun, and we, you know, we have a lot of commonality, you know, when it comes to, like, RPGs. Yeah, well, so it's, it's always uh, oh, yes. a pleasure. Okay, sir. All right. Okay. See you around. See you around, sir. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. So I'm going to end this session as well. Um, yeah, it's always cool to have uh, to be chatting with Gix, um, and very good because, like I said, that last hangout we were on didn't get any of his audio. So at least we got this, and maybe I might extract this and upload it as a separate thing because that's all I I did really at that point after I um, completed the Mages Guild. Okay, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in Tamriel.